Howdy, how's it going? Welcome back, or howdy if you're new. Well guys, we have a new contender on the table when it comes to cooling the ROG Ally. If you know me, you've been around the channel for a minute, you'll know I've tried every backplate out there, including my own custom backplate, where as Steve from Gamers Nexus said, I out ROG'd even ROG with this RGB 92 millimeter fan that actually goes all the way through. It's not just mounted for looks. This thing actually did put in some work. Before that, we even had a Noctua fan on there. So this was a world's first. We've tried all of the handheld DIYs. We tried the previous JSOX backplate. And now we're going to try their new backplate. And there's something different about this. It may look the same on the outside, but trust me, as they always say, on the inside is what really counts. So with that out of the way, are you ready? If you are, definitely leave a like. So here we go. Let's unbox this thing. My JSOX rep sent me a message, said, hey, I got something on the way for you. I was like, hey, all right, let's go. Let's see it. So this is the JSOX transparent backplate. It says Vince's version, but that's not really what we're here for. We're here for something else. So you do get a battery cover that actually makes the battery not so shiny and it does help with aesthetics, trust me. But what's lurking underneath that you have never seen before and neither did I, I actually didn't even know this was a thing, they just sent it to me. I don't know if this is out yet. If it's out, it's out. Go check it out on the website. I'll try to leave links below. But look at this. A metal heat sink and I'm not joking like this is this is promising okay so we're gonna go ahead and take the back plate out this back plate it's it's the same as the other one they're the same picture uh, the only difference is the insides but so looking at the vents everything's the same no big deal all right, so let's get into this. We'll set the manual and all that to the side. We'll just toss the box. We don't need that where we're going. Here is the state of my ally currently. You know, it's gone through tons of different versions and revisions, and I'm constantly, constantly improving this thing. I have tested every thermal solution out there. I keep getting these silly comments and people recommending to use liquid metal. Now you just sit at home in your grandma's basement with your drawers on, <laughs> typing on your damn keyboard. Shut the hell up. And there's several reasons you don't want to use liquid metal in a handheld. It's not even safe in a desktop or a laptop. And a lot of people long term, if you ask them after a year, it kind of has issues. And it's not really recommended anyways. Because what's going to happen is that metal, it's liquid, it leaches out after time and it gets hot and it can pump itself out and these APUs get so hot that it's gonna have a higher chance of that. So you're gonna need to use conformal coating around the entire APU and anywhere around it because there's little capacitors and resistors along the side of the APU that if even a drop of that liquid metal splooges out, you're done. You're cooked, Jim. He's dead. Let us hear it for our four dead friends. <laughs> <laughs> so with that said don't recommend liquid metal I, I just don't use it I've used it before and I didn't like it I actually can get the same temperatures using something like KPX or cryo sheets and lapping the cold plate and lapping the CPU it's just it's not a good solution okay so let's dive in I'm gonna remove this back plate so you can see what's inside my ally today now I had to change my configuration around a little bit today because I want to use the heat sink. And in order to use the heat sink, there is a major caveat. If you remember my video here, this video showed the Chunky Boy mod. And I showed why it's important to use a heat sink on these NVMe drives because they get hot. They, they do run hot and they can thermally throttle. And it is pushing these drives up to the upper edge of their limits. and it's just like driving a car and your temperature is pegged out right before the overheating stage. Is it going to last forever? Nope. Just in my experience, I've had a lot of drives die. I actually just got these drives replaced by A-Data. By the way, don't use A-Data. Their turnaround time is a couple months right now. 
And uh, yeah, that was a journey in and of itself. We'll do a video on it if you want. If you are using a 2280, unfortunately, for this mod, you can't use it. So this is what I normally use in my ROG Ally is a 2280 adapter. Now this adapter still allows you to get the full transfer speeds, PCIe 4.0, it's just an extension. It's not anything different uh, than plugging it in like this way. But if you plug it in this way, you're not gonna be able to cool this bottom uh, memory chips off. So the controller, you could put a heatsink over and cool it. But the problem is the way that these temperatures are read on the drives, What's going to happen is your temperature readout is going to be fine here. Your temperature readout for the memory chip is going to be fine here. But these bottom memory chips might actually get a little too hot, especially because you're going to have to run it right over the uh, RAM slash VRAM. And these can get kind of hot too. So you're kind of cooking it from both sides. Now, is it going to work? Yes, it will work. Will it work forever? Can't promise that. I also spoke to a lot of drive manufacturers before on a video where we dove deep into what temperatures they recommend keeping the drives at. And for the most part, the controller temp, they did recommend to keep it below 65. If you get 65 and above, you start thermal throttling and it's just not ideal. Um, and there are two temperatures on a drive. However, adapters sometimes can lose some of that data in translation. Translation? Yeah. So that controller temp will always be red but sometimes the memory temp won't and that happened on the legion go and we'll dive into that on the next video but this is for today so you won't be able to use your 2280 unfortunately but let's show you how this would go on now if you have the chonky boy mod just go ahead and remove it label leave it on it's fine doesn't make a difference now if you have the black flap still take that flat flap off that flap flap actually just traps in air and it is really just a dust shield. It's just something that I always remove and a lot of other people remove and it does allow for airflow to come through and kind of keep things a lot cooler. So definitely just remove it. It's it's not a big deal. If you get dust in this thing, just blow it out with a can of compressed air. Just keep your things clean. It's not a big deal. Next, this. Go ahead and peel that bad boy off. Let's see if we can get the peel. Yeah. All right. So this is clearance perfectly for the heat pipe. Let's see if we can uh, do this. Try to line it up just right. Oh, yeah. I think that's sitting on there. Nope. So you want to gently apply some pressure. Give her some rubs. You want to basically just form that thermal pad down. Don't push too hard, but you know, give her a little rub down, you know. Give her a little smack. Make sure it's seated, which it is. Nope. A little crooked, but that's okay. We can kind of move it around just a hair. All right, but. Does it work? I don't know yet. We're going to see. So the next part of this, I'm going to turn it on, run some tests, and we'll see. Now, the other question is, how much clearance do we have back here? We have a lot of clearance, okay? But what I did just notice is this thing just comes right off. This thermal pad is not sticking so maybe we'll need to put some alcohol on it to get it to stick better that was what I was afraid of that's kind of why I was giving it a little bit more rub and dub and that I normally do I, I just I had a feeling that this wouldn't actually stay <sighs> okay next let's try the back plate again. Nope. I don't think so. I don't think we're getting enough pressure. 
that's going to actually hold this thing on. Uh, this does... Oh, nope, never mind. It still, it still comes up, Jim. Or cooked. So this thermal pad isn't even really sticking on the back side. This thermal pad is just not... Not sticking. And there's nothing that's actually going to hold this thing in place... So I'm really starting to question this mod. So what's going to happen is as you're using your ally, this thing is just going to flop forward. It's not making contact. Because in order to transfer thermal energy and heat, you need pressure. If you don't have pressure, then you're not actually efficiently getting the heat out of there and being transferred to this heat sink. So you really, really need pressure. I don't know man doesn't feel good to me but you know what there's a few things we could do here one of the things we could do actually I could wedge something in between here and that would put pressure on it I might have just the thing okay so the only ones I really have are gonna be these right here these nuts now the thing about these pads they're really good like these are my favorite besides like some of the Fuji's and uh, you know so many other pads out there but these are good but the problem is they require pressure they like to be under pressure All right, so for this test, we're gonna run HW Info in the background, and we're gonna run Cinebench R23. Now, we did have to kind of do a little hodgepodge fix to get this backplate fully seated. We had to recut some thermal pads. You might can use the stock thermal pads it comes with, but I think the main problem we were having was mounting pressure. There was nothing to press down this heatsink to actually make it stick. And there was so much room in between it that after a heat cycle or two, it just comes up and moves around. And you're not really thermally um, transferring any of that energy out so you really need some way to put pressure on this back plate to push down on the heat sink now this back plate will absorb a little bit of heat not much it is plastic after all but you know I've tested the handheld DIY and I've had some people criticize me on this but this is included and it does work it did drop temperatures about two degrees C uh, with the thermal pad and without it, it still is pretty low, but it's it's like a two to three C difference with the thermal pad. I had to cut it because of the 2280 mod, but this metal back plate right here actually gets cooled because air is flowing through these metal fins and or these holes, these vents right here, air is flowing through. So you got cold air coming in. When cold air touches metal, it cools it. So you've got a cold plate right here that actually helps cool the APU. So it's weird the way it works. I know I'm not a thermal engineer and anyone commenting is definitely not a thermal engineer if they're, you know, dissing it because they obviously have never tried it themselves. I actually try these things myself and I'm not paid to just put a turd in your pocket. So there's that. So now we're going to run the test. I just wanted to kind of give you a little bit of insight of a few of the caveats to this design right here handheld diy has thought of everything they put a lot of testing into these things in the background so mad respect for handheld diy i still think they're king right now just ease of installation everything that it comes with it just seems to be a more premium to your product nothing against jsox i definitely appreciate them trying because this heat sink right here is pretty freaking awesome I just wish that there was a way, one, we could use it with our 2280 drives, and two, there was some way to screw it down to the motherboard so it doesn't move around. We we don't want this thing lifting up, and we need maximum uh, thermal transfer. So if you're putting this on, it's going to be essentially, I, I don't want to say snake oil because it can do something, 
but if you're noticing lower temps it's just not that big a difference anyways you might notice a 1 to 2 C difference but if anything it could actually trap more heat in if it's not transferring it out somehow and getting cooled and so since this one has metal venting it actually gets cooled actively whereas this it's going to get cooled passively because there's no vents right here there's no metal here to transfer the heat to so it's just strictly going to get the back plate hotter it may dissipate a few degrees but let's just see what the max temps are going to be so we are going to run cinebench r23 so our max temp that we hit was about 86.3 degrees on the cpu temp and then below that for cpu core it was about 87.5 and you can go down the list and see all my power values but if you look at cpu package power we actually pulled up to 53 watts now that is on a 30 watt manual mode but as you can see, the boost clocks will definitely hit 53 watts. So a lot of people are very, very confused, especially over on Reddit and on YouTube and everywhere. They're always like 30 watts. Why is it drawing more power than 30 watts? It's just the way the AMD boost tables work. It's going to allow it to boost as, you know, up to that limit. So if you have that limit set at 53 watts for that third boost, it's going to hit up to it as long as it has enough temperature headroom. With all that out of the way, we did draw 53 watts. We had a max temp of 87.5, and that is with the JSOX modified um, heatsink here. We did have to put this thermal pad on there to help transfer it. So now what I'm going to do is remove that carefully, and I'm gonna put this one on, and we're really gonna put it to the test. So bear with me. I'll be right back. All right, so now we have the mod case from Handheld DIY about to go on. I have put on the thermal pad that they include. We're gonna put the back cover back on. Now keep in mind, this does transfer heat off of it onto this metal plate and air flowing through here cools it off. Therefore, it does work. If you don't believe me, just wait. We're gonna find out. So we're gonna slap that back on just like so. And now we're going to clear out our results. So earlier we had a max temp. Let's see if we can zoom in one more time. So before we had a max temp of 87.5 on the core and 86.3 on the CPU. So Let's clear this out. And I haven't rebooted, so we haven't cycled anything. We haven't gotten any different settings. No services have changed. I like to do a hot swap because this will really give you a true representation of what your temperature difference is going to be between the two devices. It's risky. I don't recommend swapping stuff on the fly while you're still booting into Windows, but we're just doing it because I fafo with everything. All right, here we go. Let's hit start, and now we'll let it run. All right. So, not only did we score a higher score, but our temperatures were lower. So we are at 83.9 as a max temp, and we still drew up to 53 watts, so our boost did kick in so I would say it is still a win for handheld DIY and that thermal pad actually does make a difference just for kicks and giggles let's remove the thermal pad and for a bonus round we'll run it one more time so hold tight let's do it in real time Like I said, don't recommend doing this, but we're going to do it. Okay, we're going to clear our results out. And we're going to run it one more time. 
and we'll see what happens. And already, we can see we are hitting 90. We're already hitting 90 degrees Celsius. So anyone who says that the thermal pad does not work obviously doesn't FAFO with their device near as much as I do. For those of you who have subscribed and follow me for any length of time, you know as well as I do that I'm not going to shove a turd in your pocket and our sentiment score went down. I'm just saying proof is in the pudding folks. You can believe people on Reddit, you can believe people on the internet. Stuff can look good, but are they really pushing it to the limits? Are they setting this at 30 watt, 30 watt, 30 watt? Or are they really trying to push as much power as they can to really see how much headroom you have? This is how you really test your stuff. You crank it to the nines and you watch and see how much it cools off. If you do it at 30 watt, 30 watt, 30 watt, your margin of improvement gets smaller and smaller and smaller because you've got less and less power to actually try to cool down. So that's why I push these things to the limit because I want to be able to turn my handheld up all the way and never thermally throttle. So we immediately hit 90 C. So what that's telling us is two things. Okay. First of all, without the thermal pad, it definitely gets hotter. Now with the JSOX option and their little heat sink, we did cool off about a three degree difference. So this thing is doing a little work, but you're only getting about a two to three Celsius difference, even with the maximum efficiency possible. So what's also going to happen is if you have a spicier NVMe drive, it's going to transfer a lot of this heat into here and then right back into your APU. So if you're using a stock drive, it's probably not a big deal. But if you're pushing a 70 degrees Celsius drive back into this heat sink, well, that 70 degrees Celsius is making this whole thing pretty dang hot, therefore getting your CPU hot even when it's not under load. So your average temperatures will actually be hotter than without it. So that's why I don't recommend this. I don't like it. I definitely appreciate um, the ingenuity and the try. It was an A for effort, but it is a... No, don't like that. Well, with that out of the way, this was a long video. I really appreciate all you guys sticking around to the end. If you did, you know you are an OG. So... Stay tuned for the next one. I know I keep saying it, but this battery mod, this freaking thing right here, ugh, I had to wait on a cable. Now, the reason I waited on a cable is because I don't want to tear up my battery, but, well, I don't want to tear up my stock cable for my battery. I want to be able to revert it because you're going to see why. I just, I have a theory. So, you guys know I faffo with everything, and I find out for you, so you don't have to. So if you like this, definitely like it, subscribe, drop a comment. I really appreciate those, and it helps the algorithm a lot. We all have a good afternoon, good evening, or good night. Push it.